Hey, Tim Sykes here. I uh, wanted to film a weekend video just going over the best and the worst plays right now. Obviously, you know, the market is down a lot, but there are still some solid spikers. Um, MMTLP, for one, has gone from one and a half up to seven, now back down to the threes. This is straight out of the seven step framework. I'll post the link just below. Click that link, learn the seven step framework. It is shocking how well it works even in this market, uh, GTII is another one. This one is now cracking after a perfect uh, seven step uh, framework run up from basically 50 cents all the way up to over $8 a share, 16 times your money if you nailed it perfectly, which no one ever does, unless you're a promoter, which you know maybe you made some money, but you're probably gonna spend your life, uh, or not even just your life, but eternity in hell uh, for being an unethical promoter who basically steals uh, from naive people. So this is what is happening right now with these two stocks. Also lower price play AGFY. I'll talk about my trades too. AGFY, very nice, 40 cents up to a buck 40. Um, TXTM was uptrending. I think it stopped uptrending. Yeah, I mean, it's uptrending a little bit, but it's just, it's a much slower mover. Um, it's really tough for me to trade these slow movers. You know, I, I don't have that much patience. Um, even on these perfect seven step framework plays, I'm still not nailing it perfectly, but I am profiting uh, now over 120,000 on the year. Um, small gains add up and, you know, to be green on a year where, you know, most of the major averages are down 25, 30, 35%. Um, and I'm traveling, mind you, I'm so jet lagged. Like we're recording this. You're going to see how tired I am. Um, I'm jet lagged. I'm opening schools again. Uh, this was just, uh, from the other day here. Um, pretty cool. You know, one of our latest schools now 110 schools. I actually have to go back to Bali after my Miami conference. We got two more schools to open. Um, it's not just about going there and, you know, celebrating. It's also bringing influencers, bringing, uh, celebrities now. Um, stay tuned. Uh, and we're opening schools up in their name, in their honor, so that they post about it. And the cool thing with Bali Children's Project is we now have uh, basically 50 schools with them in Bali, but because we post about it on social media, they've built another 50 or, or maybe even 52 now um, from, from other people who heard about it. Basically, twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars to open up uh, your own school. Um, so please, you know, whenever I post about schools, understand I'm not doing it to brag. This is why I changed the name to Karmagawa Foundation away from the foundation in my name, the Tim Sykes Foundation. I don't need the adulation. I appreciate all the compliments, but this is about how do we build as many schools as possible because. This kind of education, obviously I teach you about stock trading, but this basic kind of education for these kids is their only hope at avoiding manual labor jobs. And if they can even get manual labor jobs, and that's basically a dollar a day. And it's hard, hard, hard work for a dollar a day. You're barely making ends meet. It's not a life. Schooling is the key just to give them the basics. Um, so I'm very excited about that, but you know, I, I do what I can. Um, I do want to go over MMTLP and GTII because again, you know, so many people are trading these really tough stocks and I don't think you need to do that, especially, especially because there's the risk, not just of not making money, but there's the risk of blowing up. So I'm going to go get to MMTLP and GTII in a second, but first I got to give you a warning. Um, lots of traders blew up on Friday on one stock ILAG. The chart doesn't even look like that much, but this intraday short squeeze from four to 11. Um, there's a lot of short sellers these days. Remember, I've been warning why I don't short sell because it's such a crowded strategy because of how well I did Michael Good, Tim Grittani, you know, our stories got out there and we kind of made shorting penny stocks mainstream. Unfortunately, uh, Way too many people are short. Um, they don't have the proper risk management. They bet big because, you know, a lot of the, the quote biggest short sellers these days, they only show their biggest wins. This is why if you watch enough of my video lessons, uh, you'll hear me say that short sellers are the new promoters because they're not giving everybody the full story. So a lot of people who are trying to short right now, they think that it's easier than it is and they don't realize the risks. Um, and when I say short sellers blew up, I'm talking about some big short sellers, not even just small ones. Uh, small ones blow up all the time, but some of the most experienced, best short sellers in the world 
blew up. All it takes is one bad trade if you have a dangerous strategy and you're done. A week's work, a month's work, a year's work, a decade's work. All gone in the blink of an eye. And the short sellers weren't even wrong. ILAG did come down. But if you're too early and you risk too much, you blow up. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, call out any specific names. I, I make this video not to like say, ha ha, I told you so. I hate it when traders blow up. Um, it doesn't make me happy whether, you know, they're my student or not my student. You know, these are all non-students. Um, one former student. But, uh, you know, these short sellers just don't have risk management. Um, and I got this uh, text. You know, everyone's texting me. Like, you have to understand, like, market makers, brokers, uh, traders galore. I probably talk to more people in the industry than anybody. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm helping you understand that I have like this perspective that most people don't. So this is just one text, no names again. Uh, but they said, bro, crazy. How many people I know blew up on ILAG? Holy shit. Seven figure traders way better than me. And they fucking blew up. Thank you for teaching me the safe way. Even though I do something different, my core is your framework and your trading scared mindset. It's slower, but steady and less uh, stressful. See you in a couple days. Understand my way of trading, my way of teaching is not the most fun. If you talk to people in the industry, you ask about me, they're going to be like, he's a coward. Um, you know, he's, he's such a little like bitch. Like I, I hear all these bad words, but again, for me, it's safety first. And a lot of gunslingers, a lot of discord chat promoters, they thought that they could cheat and still succeed, you know? Rules didn't apply to them. Risk management doesn't apply to them. Um, and a lot of people who made a lot of money in 2020 and 2021 have lost most or all or even more than all because you can lose more than you have in your account with short selling in 2022. Um, and this is the same exact thing that happened back in 2008 during that crash. This is the same exact thing that happened back in 2001, 2002. I know so many people who made millions like I did back in 99 and 2000 and into 2001, but they lost it all during the crash. The key is, can you make a lot, whether in a slow way or you know a risky way, but keep that money? And the problem with the people who make millions in a risky way is they don't have the proper perspective. They don't know what they don't know. They don't realize that they're doing things in a very dangerous way. They don't realize that one trade going the wrong way or maybe two trades going the wrong way can blow them up. The way that I trade, yes, is a cowardly way. Yes, it is a safe way. If you look up these trades like, oh, I'm up six figures this year, but $300, $1,000, look, you lost 400, you made 120. Like, it's laughable how these small gains um, piss people off because they think that you need to take huge gains to be rich. I would love to take bigger gains. I did in 2020 and 2021. I was more aggressive with my goals. I was more aggressive with my position size. As I said, this entire year, I said, this is a year of learning, not necessarily earning. To be green on the year is amazing at all. Most people are losing a good chunk of their wealth. And you know, I'm not just gonna show you one text, I can show you a million, but let me just give you a few examples. Uh, here's David Hanlon, great short seller, like legit short seller. He liquidated a $850,000 account. Um, he said he thinks the lessons on risk management will be priceless, gonna show some live trading footage um, once I process and put a plan in place. And in case you can't read this, look at this. He lost $532,892 and shout out to him. I'm not ripping on him props to him for even showing this most short sellers. I can name half a dozen off the top of my head who lost more than this. None of them, none of them are showing it on their Twitter. Okay. Think about that. Props to David. Thank you for your transparency. I'm sorry for your loss and you know, good way to take it where you, you say like, you're going to learn risk management. I wish you and everybody else had listened to me before, but again, you know, I, I find that people don't listen to the boring way, this, the, the kind of, uh, like not exciting way of trading that I do. And until you have a big loss, you don't realize why I'm so, 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 so confident in my boring ways. Um, but you know, seriously, thank you, David, for sharing. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, 
you know, everyone leave a comment below. Say thank you to the short sellers who show their losses. There are so many sketchy short sellers. There's entire chat rooms full of short sellers. Entire chat rooms blew up, okay? Again, people don't like my safe way of doing things. Short sellers don't like me because I'm like, I wouldn't short in 2022 even with the market crashing because it's such a crowded thing. They're like, shut up, Tim, you're wrong. Well, I'm not, okay? I try to help people, but if you don't listen, some people are just helpless. Um, and David, I'm sure he'll be back with newfound risk management in place. Um, here's another uh, trader, Peter Trades, took a monster loss on ILAG. I learned how dangerous it is to take big size on a thin name that's not A+. I was lucky it stopped going up at 12, to be honest. Learned a lot putting in rules. So, you know, a lot of these traders who did lose big and talk about it openly, like you see they have the right mindset. Like you have to learn from your losses. It's really not the end of the world. Um, but listen to him, he says, back into retirement I go, okay? This is another one of my rules where I am a retired trader, I only come out of retirement when a play is so good that I would feel guilty missing it. My one short in the last few months, GTII, which I'll go over in a second, was me coming out of short selling retirement because there was such a good opportunity. The problem with these full-time short sellers, the problem with newbie short sellers is they're always looking for another trade. They're always looking for shorts. And the majority of the time they win. That's the problem. People say, Tim, what's, what's the problem with that? The majority of the time they win. Because the majority of the time they win, small, 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 but by embarking in such a dangerous strategy, all it takes is one, and you lose all your small gains and more. Um, and then also I gotta you know, give crap to Michael Good. He's actually speaking at my conference in Miami, so I'll, I'll give him crap in person just because that's who I am. Um, he says, ILAG got me in size. I'm still in the game, but I'm back to where I was in April, max loss. Max losses save accounts, and I was too good to have them prior to today. I'll be okay. No need to express sympathy. I'll mute comments. Um, you guys have to understand, Michael Good, guess what? He's my first millionaire student, but him and I have disagreed. He still loves short selling, um, you know, whereas I've gravitated mainly towards dip buying panics. Um, you know, I still buy breakouts, but frankly, I, I like dip buying and we disagree and that's okay. You know, this is life where no one's ever always going to agree. He was my former chat moderator. He wanted to spend more time with his family and focus more on himself. Fantastic. He put in a lot of good years, challenge students, watch all of his old webinars. But look at this. He did not even have a max loss in place because again, he didn't realize how risky it was. And ILAG says, uh, he says he, it got him in size. Um, he's back to where he was in April. So, you know, this is October, basically six months of work wiped out in one trade. Okay. This is what can happen. And you know, this is, these are the, the people who actually post on Twitter. They're secure enough. Uh, they're real enough to admit it. These are the best of the best short sellers. Okay. And the best of the best short sellers are losing five, six, seven figures on this play. Guess what the shady people are losing. Okay, I've heard some real horror stories. Again, I'm not in this to try to call anybody out. Just understand, if someone doesn't show all of their trades publicly, they're hiding something. They're shady. I'm sorry to be the bad guy and to say full transparency matters, but it does. Because a lot of these big short sellers have lured in so many newbies. And now everyone, everyone following this strategy is getting absolutely annihilated. No different than Discord promoters who similarly last year lured in all these newbies saying, just buy everything, just keep adding, it's gonna come back, it's gonna double, and they get crushed. So whether you're a shady short seller who doesn't show every trade and lures in newbies, or you're a penny stock promoter who doesn't show many or even any trades and they just try to pump everything up, they're both bad for the industry. This is why 90% of traders lose, okay? And going to the stock for a second, you can't necessarily get out. Um, even someone said, you know, some of my students like Kyle Williams, Jack Kellogg were shorting the stock. Um, I think someone said Kyle Williams was like shorting from the fours. I messaged Kyle, I was like, remember, cut losses quickly, only one trade can blow you up. And he says he lost, but he'll be okay. So fortunately, I don't know how much he lost, but this is what can happen. This stock goes from four up to 11 in basically an hour. And brokers aren't taking chances these days after what happened with HKD. 
because brokers can go out of business too. You might even, you know, play this perfectly. You might not lose too big, but then your specialized short seller broker goes out of business and then you lose your money. There's so many ways to lose money short selling. It's just not worth the risk. If you want it too bad, if you're always looking for the next short, if you're not looking for the next short and you come out of retirement and you short when there's opportunity, I think that's the way to play it. Let's go back to my first and only short in the past few months. Um, I've traded GTII quite a bit, FYI. Um, but only one of my trades has been a short and it probably was the best trade. Um, you know, I've only made like four grand. I, I haven't really been doing uh, that much in terms of size with GTII, even though it fits uh, rather perfectly. I've had some small losses. But one of my first shorts in literally years, I shorted Robin Hood in this one. These are my only two shorts in the past two years. Um, you know, I, I shorted using Trade Zero. I'll link this. You know, I link Psych Zero. We have a little uh, bonus gift because, you know, I'm frankly just proud to have a brokerage open in order to short sell if, if there's a play that's good enough, like I said, and I come out of retirement to short it, but I don't need to short. Um, you know, th there's all these like promoters saying, I, I led a bear raid. Um, I'm, I'm involved with like the, the, the CEO. I don't even know. Somebody's like somebody named Kramer is involved with this company. They're like, how many times have you talked with Kramer? Not Jim Kramer, some other Kramer. I've never talked to this other Kramer. I've talked to Jim Kramer before. I've never talked with this other Kramer. Um, and I only shorted because the stock was spiking so much. And I actually did a whole video lesson on this. You can see that my plan was to dip by the crash, but I saw it go from basically five to the eights very quickly. I had to short it. I thought I only shorted 500. I actually ended up shorting a thousand. I had just never done a short on the trade zero platform before. Um, but I'll link this psych zero so that if you want to have uh, an account just in case of short sellers uh, of a good short selling opportunity, I think it's good to have that account because this is why I'm talking about it. You know, some people will say, okay, Tim, you've already said don't short. That's a simple lesson. Stop talking so much. Don't short aggressively. That said, if you see this short squeeze happening and you see it go from four to 11, then you see this first red candle, by all means, try to short it. Take advantage of the early shorts panicking. No different than how I take advantage of the early, or not even early, but the over aggressive longs panicking on a pump and I dip by a panic. So too is a good strategy where early shorts are getting squeezed, creating a massive squeeze, and you can short this in the nines, tens, or elevens, covering the eights, seven, sixes, fives. Um, so there is still opportunity if you have the right mindset, if you're patient enough. Um, but again, you know, I, I really can't reinforce it enough how dangerous it is to want to short sell, to over aggressively short sell. Some of the best short sellers, I mean, Michael Good was my first millionaire student and it got him in size, okay? He's been trading for two decades, two decades, and he didn't realize the risk. I mean, this guy, David, 500,000 plus, so many other short sellers, 500,000 plus, even a million plus. I've heard some serious horror stories. Um, so again, if you ever see any short seller on Twitter or in chat room talking about how, you know, they, they come up with like these formulas, like if the float rotation is four times, or you know, I'm risking three R, all that is BS. You throw out all your formulas, you throw out all your baloney. When there's a squeeze, you get squeezed, you lose everything, you might lose more than everything. Um, BPTH, you know, blew up my old friend, Scott, who was a, a market maker and trader for decades. One trade blew him up on BPTH. So, you know, this happens. Again, leave a comment underneath this video. Thank David, Peter, Michael, anybody else who are talking about their losses publicly. Shame on anybody who short sells and does not talk about their, their losses publicly. Literally, go into chat rooms, go on Twitter. There's a bunch of traders who short sell, not one of them. I can, I can think of probably about 40 or even 50 traders who are you know, hardcore short sellers and somehow magically they didn't trade ILAG. Somehow magically this one trade that fits their pattern, they were on vacation or, or whatever. Um, 
It's laughable. But again, you know, there's always going to be promoters. There's always going to be lying traders. All you can do is try to accept it, try to learn how this game works and try to learn from it and try to do better and try to capitalize on it. Because there are these insecure, shady short sellers where you know they're losing big, you know they're um, shorting aggressively because that's who they are, that creates opportunity if you're patient. Um, and this was my one short, a thousand bucks. I covered way too soon. Like 10 minutes later, it was like in the fives. So I could have made 3,000, but again, I'm kind of rusty short selling. Um, I don't mind being rusty. MMTLP, this was another good dip buy. I want to talk about this. If you don't want anything to do with shorts, or short squeezes, I understand, focus on dip buys. Um, MMTLP has been a perfect morning panic every single morning lately. Even right here, you can't see it that much on the chart, but it dipped from right here from the fours to the threes before it spiked back to the fives, all in like 30 minutes. Perfect morning panic, I was sleeping, I'm all jet lagged. Congrats to anybody who nailed it there. This doesn't look like the bounce happened, but it actually did. Um, if you look at this, it dropped from seven down to the fives, back to the sevens. You had an easy dollar a share to make inside of 15 minutes. So yesterday, uh, I'm filming this on a Saturday. I'll post this on a Sunday. Uh, yesterday on a Friday, I saw it dropping here and I thought, oh, this is going to be, you know, a potential, um, bounce play, right? Not the case. I entered too early. Um, I lost 400 bucks. Dip buying and short selling are not exact sciences. Um, so some people say, oh, why did you dip buy it so quickly? If, I was, if it was going to follow the same play as the previous two days, then this would have been a good dip buying bounce. It didn't, so I got out. I actually had some execution issues. Should have been a smaller loss, but you know sometimes uh, the stock moves quick. MMTLP moves very fast. The good news is, some people will also say, if you have one loss, you shouldn't trade it again. I say nonsense. If it's a perfect play, um, I got right back in, in the high twos. I actually do better and I prefer stocks um, that are just below a key level. Like I think a lot of stop losses got taken out at three. Um, this is pretty much the bottom. People say, how do I catch the bottom every time? Well, I was too early this time thinking that this support would hold, but I got back on the horse when it broke a key level and it didn't really do that much. The bad news for me is that even though I caught the bottom, it was kind of choppy here for basically an hour. Um, and I tried to give it time, but I, I just don't have patience. Um, and I made, you know, basically a thousand bucks on this. So I made back my losses and a little more, but really the bounce, um, you know, was like a two hour bounce. And this sometimes happens too. So if you are going to dip by, ideally you get the morning panic and the quick bounce of a dollar a share in a few minutes, like this one displayed um, two days in a row, which I missed both days. That was also probably my, my, uh, thought process a little, there was a little FOMO, a little fear of missing out. Cause I knew that I had these perfect opportunities and I missed them. This fits my seven step framework so perfectly. This is a number five pattern that I'm talking about. Again, click the link below, read the complete penny stock course. I'll link that book too. The more prepared you are, the better, you know, these patterns, the more prepared you'll be on these trades, the better your odds of success. You cannot over prepare enough, but it's not an exact science. Two morning panics and spikes in a row, third day fake out at first, and then the bounce took two hours. So um, I was on the right track. Again, as this is happening, you know, the, the market had a big bounce back on uh, Thursday and then Friday, you know, the same kind of fade. And actually what's even more concerning is that it faded below previous support. This is the NASDAQ. Um, the S&P is like right at the former support levels. So that'll be interesting in the coming week. The Dow is actually a little better than former support, but the NASDAQ is getting hit the most below former support. So think about what the overall market is doing. But again, I'm focused on perfect plays like MMTLP. Um, we've got my in-person conference. I'm excited to see many of you in person in Miami. I think we have like 300 people coming. It's pretty crazy. Um, you know, I, I just focus on the seven step framework place and ILAG, listen, it is a former supernova. I just don't know why you're shorting this so heavily, right? Like you could say it's manipulated. You could say it's overvalued, but it just doesn't fit my seven step framework. You'll do so much better if you adapt your training to this framework. Not that it's an exact science, but that it's a good guide. Um, 
I mean, you can short any stock you want, but it's, it's very dangerous shorting random plays, as you can see here. Remember, shorts are very, very aggressive, and that creates problems galore. Again, leave a comment below. Let me know if my warnings are getting to you. Say you won't short sell. Tell me you won't short sell aggressively. And please thank people like Pete, uh, Michael, and uh, David for sharing their losses. And by all means, go, go, go attack the short sellers who you know in chat rooms on Twitter. Tell them to show all their trades. I'm not saying attack, not like physically attack, but like call them out on their BS. This industry can be a lot bigger, a lot more mainstream if we all work together to weed out the riffraff, okay? Shady people, unfortunately, are always going to exist, but their influence can be lessened when we all call it out. Um, you know, because again, most newbies just don't know how risky short selling is. They just don't know how many short sellers lose huge amounts of their account because these short sellers aren't transparent. This is part of the reason why I teach. Um, you know, some people are like, some of the promoters on GTII are attacking me and they're like, you're such a scam teaching people how to make a lousy few hundred dollars, I made more. I'm A, trading with a small account, okay? B, I donate all my trading profits to charity, so I'm trying to show you the process. But C, the main reason why I teach is my blood is boiling when I see lies, when I see injustice, when I see fakes. That's why I got started teaching. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot more fakes and there's a lot more BS in this industry than I even realized when I first began teaching. It's almost um, just, you know, very awe-inspiring. Not even in a good way, awe-inspiring in a bad way. Like if you were to visit, you know, Mordor and Lord of the Rings were like a real thing and you're there standing in front of this terrible volcano that breeds so much evil. That's kind of like the industry. Um, <laughs> it's a weird analogy, but it's true. So stay safe, take small gains. Don't worry if over aggressive short sellers uh, claim that you're being too cowardly. Don't worry if you feel too cowardly. I would rather you under trade. I would rather you take smaller gains and stay safe. Or again, Feel free to ignore my rules. Feel free to ignore my lessons. Trade aggressively. Follow Discord promoters. Follow short sellers to your doom. Um, it's your choice. You know, some people are like, you know, they, they come up with like these excuses why they can't listen to me. And I'm like, it literally makes zero difference to me. Zero difference whatsoever in my life if you follow the rules or not. I'm trying to help you. Um, Part of the reason why I donate all my trading profits to charity, in case you don't realize, not just to do good, not just because it makes this all meaningful, but so that you understand, it doesn't benefit me if I make money or lose money on a trade at all. I'm here trying to teach you the process. I'm the only unbiased person probably that you know. Um, it's in my own best interest to create the most successful students. It's in my own best interest to get people not to blow up. Um, but again, I can't get through to some people. Some people hear what's coming out of my mouth and then it goes you know, in one ear, out the other. They take big positions, they short sell aggressively. Again, they win six, seven, eight times out of 10. So they're like, shut up, Tim, I'm fine. And then all it takes is one. Same thing with promoters. You know, they're making money when the promotion is on the way up. They're all thinking that I'm like some short seller who wants the play to crash. I don't. I want GTII, I want MMTLP to go to the moon, okay? The higher, the better, the more range for me from trading my seven-step framework. But I also know how this ends. I know how dangerous short selling is, and I know how pumps like GTII and MMTLP end. So while it might not be an exact science, we pretty much know the final chapter. And you can kind of work your way backwards to see how it's going to end. I can't keep this to myself. Um, so this is what I do. I teach. Again, leave a comment if I'm getting through to you. Congrats if you dip bought MMTLP or GTII and you banked. Congrats if you shorted, um, you know, conservatively after the overaggressive shorts got squeezed on these or on ILAG. Just remember, small gains are fine. Most traders lose. It's okay to only only make 120,000 on the year when everyone else is losing their ass. Um, stay in the game, be safe, learn from your trades, and size up only 
only after enough experience, enough confidence, um, enough example after example after example, while always thinking in your mind, in the back of your mind, if you take bigger size, you can blow up. It doesn't matter how experienced or how much money you have, big traders blow up too. So stay safe, I'll see a lot of you in Miami. So 10 minutes after I recorded that video, uh, Kyle Williams just uploaded his loss because he's fully transparent. He lost 86,000. So not quite devastating for him, but still pretty bad. Um, again, you know, he's a multimillionaire trader and he got crushed. A lot of multimillionaire traders got crushed. Don't be an aggressive short seller. Just get that through your heads.